The heroine of this story was a beautiful girl who wanted to fulfill her Hollywood dream. Like most similar stories, it all started beautifully. But this young lady's credulity cost her her life. The girl disappeared. And while the police were collecting information all over Los Angeles, her family was so desperate that they literally went on foot to search along the highway, stretching hundreds of kilometers. On the evening of Monday, the 16th of April of the 90s, Brave and Bowie was waiting for the return of his 24-year-old sister. Earlier this weekend, she went on a trip to Phoenix to visit her family and a friend, but by the beginning of the working week, she was going to return to Los Angeles. The girl's name was Jamie Bowie. She definitely would not have missed this Monday, as she was going to go out on her first working day in a major Hollywood studio, literally in a day. She had to participate in one important new project. Her brother was waiting for her to return to the apartment where they lived together, as they were going to meet and celebrate Jamie's future successes. But the girl still wasn't there. Ryan thought that she was late on the road and would arrive later, so he just went to bed, as he had to get up early. In the middle of the night, the guy heard the sound of keys being used to open the door lock. At first, he was scared awake, but immediately assumed that it was his sister. She must have returned on her trip. Brian was very tired and didn't want to get up, so he just rolled over and fell asleep again. The young man woke up in the morning when the sun had already risen. Brian immediately went to check on his sister, but she was nowhere to be found. The guy walked around the apartment and noticed that some things were not in their places. They had obviously been moved, but that didn't give any clues about what had happened during the night or where Jamie was now. At that time, there were no mobile communication facilities yet, and Pry could not find out what was wrong with his sister. The guy remembered that he heard the noise of the door opening in the middle of the night and assumed that his sister was returning, changed her clothes, moved things in the process, and left early in the morning before he got up. But according to the agreement, she had to wake up her brother, if not at night when she arrives, then at least in the morning when she gets up herself. But for some reason, I didn't do it. The young man was confused, so he assumed that his sister had left on urgent important business. She could have had problems with her car or something related to her new job. In any case, he needed to get ready, so he went about his business. Brian left a note for his sister and left. Brian was really scared in the evening when he returned home and found an untouched note and his sister's absence from home. It became obvious that Jamie hadn't come. It was doubly strange because she had to go to her dream job soon and was so preparing for it. The girl as a whole was responsible and did not miss such events for no apparent reason or without warning anyone. Even more frightening was the fact that during the absence of his brother during the day, someone was clearly in the apartment. Things in the rooms were scattered, a stereo system, a suitcase, and several valuable items were missing. The guy understood that his sister would not do that throw things around and take valuables. There was definitely someone else in the apartment. The brother was afraid to stay in the apartment alone, so a frightened Brian rushed to his friend who lives nearby to call the police from him. When law enforcement officers arrived on the call, the victim described to them the events of the last days. The brother of the missing girl believed that her disappearance could be connected with an apartment invasion and robbery. However, the officers who arrived did not attach importance to his words. They believed that this was a common burglary, since there were no signs of abduction or struggle with the victim in the room, no blood, no weapons. In their opinion, Jamie was clearly not here, and any speculation of his brother was premature. The police drew up a report on the theft, examined the dwelling, and then decided to make sure that Jamie had nothing to do with what had happened. They called her family in Phoenix. According to relatives, the girl left them on time, and they never saw her again. After that, the police voiced their assumptions that she was just stuck on the road 
because the path is not close, about 600 kilometers. Her car could have broken down, so she will return as soon as she solves all the problems that have arisen. After that, they immediately left the house. Despite this, my brother believed that something was wrong here. He moved in with a friend for a while, because it wasn't safe to stay in the apartment. Brian reported everything that had happened to his parents. They agreed with their son that there were suspicious moments in this case and felt that something bad had happened to their daughter. So the mother went to the local police station in Arizona and filed a report on Jamie's disappearance. Those policemen immediately got involved in the work. Information about the disappearance of a young girl was immediately broadcast on the radio throughout the state. After that, a nationwide search system for missing persons was launched. To do this, the mother provided photos of the girl, as well as a description of how her daughter was dressed before she disappeared. According to the family, the girl was wearing bright pink trousers and a light top. During this period, the father of the missing Joe and his brother printed leaflets with her photo, distributed and pasted them in both cities, and also made printouts with the image of her car. A blue convertible Volkswagen Beetle 1978th year of release. They also distributed leaflets along the route that was most likely for the girl to return home. The scale of the work done by relatives is difficult to overestimate because the relatives of the missing set themselves an ambitious task. They had to track their missing Jamie on hundreds of kilometers between the state highway as well as search for her vehicle. The trip from Phoenix to Los Angeles took at least six to seven hours. Jamie was supposed to be heading west on Interstate 10. In order to cover all this territory, the family split up, so they drove along this route every day. Some sections of the road were passed on foot. We visited all the hotels, cafes, and roadside gas stations that we met along the way, and Jimmy could visit them. Relatives talked to hundreds of people, grabbed for any clue, but could not get any useful information about the missing 24-year-old girl. A large-scale search operation, which was organized by relatives, made a lot of noise. Rumors have spread among the locals that the girl was kidnapped, and the police are not even really investigating the case. This excitement forced the police officers to take up work more actively and analyze what happened again. After that, detectives came to the conclusion that the robbery of the apartment and the disappearance of the man could still be connected. After all, both incidents occurred at about the same time. The relatives of the missing also continued their search. Jamie's mother was constantly putting up flyers on the nearest section of the road and even acted as an investigator, interviewing the owner of all roadside establishments. Even the police were amazed by the zeal shown by the woman. Detectives have never seen in their practice that a mother participated in such a large-scale operation to find her own child. Usually people lose control of themselves and self-control, but this woman acted so clearly and confidently, desperately trying to find her daughter. But it is difficult to imagine the experiences that she experienced and that tormented her heart throughout this search and rescue operation. Her brother and father were engaged in similar work, but on the second stage of the route, on which the girl had to get to another state and move towards Los Angeles. They also handed out leaflets and talked to people trying to find out at least something. The situation was complicated by the fact that the highway ran along the desert. If Brian's sister got lost along the way, in some wild area without people and infrastructure, then it could be dangerous for her life, and it would be quite difficult to find her there. All circumstances did not play in favor of the search groups. Time passed, and there were no leads. It already seemed that it would never be possible to find this grain of sand in the desert. But suddenly, the efforts of the relatives of the missing person were justified. Some time after the start of the rescue operation, which was carried out by the police, several people at once, random motorists who found out about the missing girl, responded to their trouble and called the police. According to them, 
they saw an attractive girl in a blue Volkswagen Beetle convertible, similar in description to Jamie. She was standing on the side of the road. It seemed that her car had some problems. Witnesses also described a couple of dark-skinned people who decided to help this girl fix the car. They stood next to her and helped the young beauty. Therefore, other drivers did not offer their help. But they didn't see anything suspicious there. It is worth noting that the missing woman was quite a bright, attractive girl. In addition, she drove a noticeable car. Her beauty attracted the attention of motorists who remembered the girl. All this made it possible to get vital information faster. Having received important clues, the detectives went to the meeting place with motorist witnesses. Here they met truckers who recognized Jamie from a photo. The men were sure they had seen her. Now they were able to tell the investigators all the details. According to them, truckers rested in the parking lot for trucks. Meanwhile, not far from them, the girl was standing on the side of the road. She got out of the car and opened the hood as her engine was smoking. Immediately, a couple drove up to her in a red Volkswagen Beetle car. A male driver and a female passenger got out of the car and helped the girl start the engine. Then she drove on. The truckers claimed that the people who stopped to help left after her and were moving a short distance away from her. The light dimmed until they disappeared over the horizon. It happened approximately in the center of this deserted highway. At first, this situation did not cause them any questions, but after learning about the disappearance of the young beauty, the truckers began to doubt. They began to suspect that the good Samaritans who stopped on the road to help Jamie were actually involved in her disappearance. The police continued the operation to search for the missing and concentrated their search efforts on this section of the road. They began to comb the central part of the desert in which there was the greatest chance of finding the victim of the crime. Hundreds of kilometers of the road were checked, but nothing could be found. The blue convertible literally fell through the ground. The situation was significantly complicated because it was an era without the internet. People did not have mobile phones, and it was much more difficult to contact each other. There were no geotags and GPS tracking. There were simply no surveillance cameras. The police used the only opportunity to attract attention and alert motorists passing through this section on the regular highway. A large poster with the image of a girl and her car was installed. Law enforcement officers asked to provide any information that could advance the investigation and help find the missing. Naturally, random people started calling the department right away, who were just trying to make themselves known, but did not help the investigation in any way. About 200 calls were accepted, which did not bring the expected result. A lot of time was wasted processing this information. The situation changed about a month after the announcement of Jamie Bowie missing. The police station was called by a witness who worked in a citrus orchard. During a tour of the territory, he found the body of a man in the irrigation system. The police immediately went to the place and found the girl's body there in very poor condition. She looked a lot like Jamie in her clothes. The deceased were wearing bright pink trousers, a light top, similar to those described by relatives of the missing. However, investigators were in no hurry to identify before the results of the forensic examination are expected. According to the degree of decomposition, the police determined that she had been lying here for the entire search operation, about a month. In addition to assuming the identity of the victim, a spent shotgun cartridge was found at the scene. Due to decomposition, it was impossible to determine the cause of death without an autopsy. But the patron eloquently said that the girl could have been shot. If she really was the shooter's victim, then this citrus orchard was the crime scene. The medical examiner during the autopsy of the body found that the victim was shot twice. During the examination, it was determined that the first shot was fired by the girl when she was still standing on the ground. Apparently, 
a weapon was pointed at her, so she made an instinctive defensive movement with her hand. She probably tried to run, but the attacker reacted faster. The shot damaged a limb and also hit the face and head. The medical examiner acknowledged that this attack was fatal. After her, the girl fell into the irrigation system and a control shot was fired at her in the back. The victim was identified by dental records as missing Jamie Bowie. Now the worst fear of detectives and the family of the missing person has been confirmed. Her last resting place was a citrus orchard near the city of Indio, California. It became clear to the investigators why the victim could not be found earlier since this is a very desolate remote area and it is possible to see such an object in an irrigation ditch only by directly encountering it. You can't see it from a distance. In addition, there are practically no people here, only wild animals. Everyone was shocked. The friendly and beautiful girl was bright and ambitious. She was loved by all her relatives and friends, especially her brother, with whom she was very close. She was the eldest and always protected Brian as a child. She had a whole life ahead of her and who could cut it off so mercilessly the brother of the deceased told investigators that she had always dreamed of working in Hollywood and just a few days before her death. Finally officially got a job there, Jamie became a manager at a major studio. While the family was putting up with the loss of their beloved daughter and preparing for her funeral, the police were looking for at least some clues to get to the killer. It was urgently necessary to find and stop a dangerous criminal. However, there were no witnesses to the crime. Detectives believed that the key to the solution was the dead man's car a blue Volkswagen Beetle convertible, which no one had seen since the girls helped repair it by dark-skinned strangers. The police paid special attention to the search for this suspicious couple who pursued Jamie and are probably related to her death. Months of unsuccessful searches went by. About a year and a half after the brutal murder, the police station called and reported that a blue car had been found. It was a convertible, the numbers of which coincided with the wanted one. But there was one oddity with him. The car was repainted black. The convertible was clearly abandoned. The police carefully examined the car, but there were no clues inside. They had to find out who was driving this car, so they gathered a whole press conference to appeal to potential witnesses for help through the media. It didn't always work, but there was nothing to do, so the police hoped that someone would respond. This time, there was a witness who called and directly said that he saw his neighbor driving this car. This statement startled the investigators. They questioned the eyewitness in detail, and he gave them a tip on his neighbor. The police called the suspect for questioning after tracking him down. However, this neighbor only complicated the situation, as he told detectives that he stole this car a few months ago. Detectives promised him protection from theft charges if he provided valuable information to advance the investigation the man agreed to these conditions. He honestly said that he stole the car and found out that it had problems with the electrics. After that, he brought her to the car service. When the owner asked him if the car was stolen, because he had seen another person like that, and that car also had problems with electrics. The thief was afraid of exposure and decided to abandon the convertible. He repainted it black and took it away from his house. The hijacker gave the address of the auto repair shop where the police went. There they found out who had previously contacted a mechanic with a problem car. So detectives came to the owner of the store from whom the car was stolen. They met with a man and he said that he had purchased a convertible from a dark-skinned couple who arrived in a red Volkswagen. Again, this pair of people surfaced in the investigation who first helped the girl with the repair of the car and then sold her vehicle. Obviously, they knew what had happened to Jamie. Investigators began to interrogate the store owner more actively 
so that he would give them clues on how to get to a couple. And he provided them with them. The man had a contract of sale of the vehicle with him, which turned out to be dated literally the next day after the announcement of Jamie missing. This document had the seller's signature on it. Suddenly, the case, which had remained unsolved for more than a year, began to move by leaps and bounds. A certain Billy Ray Ricks was listed in the contract of sale. At that time, he was 45 years old. He and his wife, 28-year-old Hilda, lived in the Los Angeles area. Detectives analyzed the identity of the suspect and found out that the man had a stormy criminal past. Billy was known for killing his own brother in a fight. His criminal career began on the streets of Los Angeles when he broke the windows of one of the police offices in Compton in the 70s. He specialized in stealing Volkswagen Beetle cars, which no longer seemed like a coincidence to them. It all came together. Billy was a bloodthirsty monster who was capable of brutal murder, and Jamie happened to meet him on the road. On the cars that he was hunting, which turned out to be a tragic outcome for her. When the detectives came to the couple's house, they were not at home. It turned out that they were already on the run. The police turned to the media for help and declared to African Americans as one of the most wanted people in America. After the information was widely publicized, it turned out that the criminal couple had many more enemies than friends. The police station was literally bombarded with calls with evidence of where the Ricks were and what they were doing. It became known that it was a plane ticket to the Turks and Caicos Islands, a former British colony in the Caribbean that was killed. He stayed in the city only because he had problems getting a passport. Police officers quickly found out where the suspects were hiding, all on the same tits. After that, they ambushed them in the parking lot and detained them as soon as the criminals were near the house. After the arrest, it was decided to separate them in order to verify their testimony and obtain a confession. The couple was brought to the Citrus Orchard to India in different cars. During this period, 28-year-old Hilda Ricks was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. She was deprived of contact with her husband. The woman also did not receive information from the police so her fear skyrocketed. This was only to the advantage of the investigation, since it is very easy to split a person in such a state, which happened. In the interrogation room, Hilda repeated the story known to the police about Jamie's disappearance, but with new bloodthirsty details. According to her, they met a girl on the interstate highway number 10. Jamie's car stalled on the road. She had engine problems, and Billy offered to help. He started the car, but told the girl that she urgently needed service. So he offered to follow Jamie to escort her to the nearest place where it would be possible to repair the car, or to the city itself, where she would be safe. The girl agreed and trusted strangers, and after they got to the nearest settlement, invited the couple to dinner at a restaurant. She was very grateful, he even offered to pay the man for his work as soon as she received her first salary at a new workplace. Jamie clearly trusted the criminals, and they unceremoniously took advantage of it. At first, Billy told his wife that he would simply take the car from a random victim, according to his usual scheme. The woman did not resist and contradict her husband, because she knew that it was better not to mess with her husband, but it went further. The couple had a shotgun with them. However, Hilda did not suspect that her husband was going to kill Jamie. The woman admitted that the conspiracy began to imply the death of the girl just at the moment when she was treating them in a restaurant. Jamie got up from the table to go to the bathroom. At that moment, Billy confessed his intentions to her and discussed in detail with his wife how everything would happen. She eventually had to obey her husband, as she could have suffered herself. Then Jamie got into her car and drove on, and the couple followed her. At some point, the criminals stopped her car and kidnapped the girl. They tried to use her card at an ATM 100 kilometers from Los Angeles. Then, they went to a bank in India and tried again, but there was no money in the account. 
According to Hilda, at first she wanted to dissuade him from this venture, but then she gave up these attempts, as she feared for her own life. In this relationship, she was clearly in the minority. The man dominated her, and probably did not disdain to use physical force to convince his wife of his rightness. As a result, Hilda spent the whole journey knowing that the young beauty, whom they helped with her husband, was doomed. The woman watched in silence as he led her to her death in a corner of the desert. He ordered her to put out the lights, and his wife obeyed. Then, in the darkness, she heard two shots. Only Billy came back to the car. Hilda didn't know exactly what he had done to her, but at that moment, she had no doubt that Jamie was no longer alive. But she continued to remain obediently silent, and did not even ask her husband about anything. However, the dangerous criminal did not stop there. He planned to rob the girl's apartment, as he left her keys with him. In addition, he took her driver's license, thanks to which he was able to find out the exact address. Billy did break into the apartment while Jamie's brother was sleeping inside, but the killer didn't know about it. He was only interested in valuables that could be stolen. Taking what he needed, he left the apartment. If his brother had left the room at that moment, he would have been waiting for the unenviable fate that befell Jimmy. As it was, Brian was lucky that he didn't wake up in the middle of the night. But the criminal did not stop there either. He returned to the apartment in the afternoon for a new portion of valuables. Later, some of the stolen items were found during a search of the apartment where the criminals lived. Part of the missing property was found in a Denver pawn shop after the criminals confessed where they sold stolen goods. Hilda said that the stolen blue convertible was sold in Fresno for less than $2,000. Their goal was to get at least some money faster, so the car was sold for such a ridiculous amount. During the interrogation, Billy presented a different picture to the investigators. He immediately began to accuse his wife of this cruel crime. However, his story contradicted absolutely all the facts that had already been proven at that point. It was quite obvious to the police who was actually the author of this bloodthirsty murder. Besides, he had a criminal past before, so everything was obvious. Ultimately, the prosecutor's office offered Hilda a plea bargain. She must possess incriminating testimony against her spouse. Under state law, the death penalty was imposed for this crime. Therefore, the woman willingly agreed to cooperate with the prosecution. She pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, although in fact, she didn't pull the trigger. She didn't kidnap the girl or plot murder. Despite this, Hilda refused to resist the killer in any way. She never informed the police about the incident during the entire investigation. In addition, the woman was with the criminal during all the bloody events, did not even warn the victim herself, although she had the opportunity Therefore, she clearly deserved a prison sentence. As a result, she received a life sentence with the right to parole in 25 years and testified against Billy at the trial. The trial began in the 94th year. The prosecution had only one serious problem, namely the lack of physical evidence. At that time, DNA testing was not yet widespread and there were no other technologies that could provide important evidence. Billy also wanted to make a deal with the prosecution, but he was refused, after which the man tried to make himself insane in order to evade responsibility for his bloodthirsty deeds. But that plan didn't work either. In any case, he never confessed to being involved in the death of Jamie Bowie. The jury analyzed the case materials for a long time and emotionally after that, Billy Ray Ricks was found guilty of premeditated murder and theft for committing crimes, Wu was threatened with the death penalty, which he was very afraid of, and the jury unanimously supported this decision for the cruel way he treated a young beauty from whom he took away the future. This court decision was a long-awaited point for the affected Bowie family who had a hard time going through the tragic death of Jamie. Relatives believed 
that the girl was a victim of her own defenselessness because she traveled alone. In addition, she showed excessive trust in strangers and paid for it with her life. Hilda Rex was released from prison in November of the year 2014. Criminal Billy repeatedly filed appeals, which were rejected. The criminal is still on death row and is waiting for the sentence to be carried out. If you liked my work, subscribe to the channel, support this video with a like, and also let's discuss this story in the comments. Subscribe to my Telegram channel, there are a lot of interesting news from the criminal world. Thank you all, and bye.